Hello and welcome back to Larry's Phrase, where you learn about animals and learn how to pronounce your teacher's name. So, this week we've got three major holidays going on. So, first one, of course, going on now, the Jewish holiday of Passover, which is, which is noteworthy but doesn't have any association with animals unless you count the uh, ancient practice of uh, animal sacrifice, which... Yeah, not only do we not do anymore, it also deals with domestic animals, which I'd really rather not have to deal with on, on Larry's Furries unless I have to, so uh, so I'm not going to do I'm not going to do a specialty on that. So ne the next holiday coming up, of course, tomorrow, April Fool's Day. Which which is uh, known as in French as uh, Poisson d'Avril, literally April Fish Day. Which is, which is, and of course it's similarly n named in Italian as well, so, so possibly some of the other uh, European romance communities. But it's, po but here, the the problem with Poisson d'Avril is it doesn't specify a specific fish. Fish is too general to be a, to be a to be a very phrase feature, and for. And from my understanding of that is that the uh, the actual fish most commonly involved are paper cutouts of fish that you, that that tr that people uh, try to st to uh, tape to someone's back as a typical uh, April Fool's Day prank in in the, the parts of Europe with where the holiday is known as April Fish Day, which which is amusing, but again not a, not an animal feature I can speak species I can feature, you know, paper cutout just is not a fish species. So moving on, the third major holiday coming up is, of course, Easter, this Sunday. So that's something I can do. Yeah, after all, we all know about the Easter Bunny. It's probably what you, what you predicted would be this week's Larry's Furries, even before I presented it. But, of course, which bunny is the Easter Bunny? is the question. And doing some uh, research in the history of the Easter Bunny, uh, the uh, best candidate appears to be the European Hare, which we have already done a Larry's Furries about. So, some, so something else is needed. And, you know, tying, tying back the, uh, pr the prankish Easter, you know, April Fool's Day uh, aspect of the week, I I found an interesting candidate from Australia. Right, so, Kingdom Animalia, of course, Louis Furries, we deal with animals. Phyla Cordata, we're dealing with a vertebrate this week. Right, class Mammalia, mammals, the actual furries for, for Louis Furries. Uh, I usually do not, don't bring bring in uh, levels of taxonomy other than the main ones, but this time I think it's worth mentioning the, in, the infra class, or, in a, or basically subclass level, marsupialia. So, we, our animal of the week is a marsupial, which are the, which are the mammals with, which uh, have uh, pouches, such, a, such as opossums, uh, kangaroos, of course, most of the world's marsupials are are living in Australia, and this, this week's is among, um, animal is among those. <laughs> and more specifically, we're in order Paramillimorphia, which are the bandicoots. Do we have any uh, Crash Bandicoot fans in here, other than me? Uh, if so, we can talk. We can talk about it uh, this af this afternoon. Uh, <laughs> So, since I'm playing and hosting a, a Wellness Wednesday on on games, but but for, but for Larry's furries, let's let's skip Crash for now and meet his cousin from family Phylacomyidae, which is which are the bilbies, or we or really currently the bilby singular, because there's only one species of them still living, Macrotus lag lagotus. You know, the greater bilby, if you want to be specific, although, although that's, re that's redundant since the lesser bilby went, 
became extinct in the 1950s, and uh, leave, leaving leaving this species, the greater bilby, as the as the only uh, living member of it, of its uh, family. And here it is. Uh, more specifically, in the picture, the the big the bigger one is the bilby. Uh, the le the le the lesser one is a is a particular mouse species, but. But the big animal in that picture is the bilby. He's a, he's a, he is a between, length between 11 and 22 inches, weight between two and five pounds. You know, you know, you notice that, that the bilby looks looks kind of a rabbit-like. Uh, one of one of its alternative common names is a, is the rabbit bandicoot. <laughs> so it's it is nocturnal. It. it it burrows underground uh, the same way that rabbits do, although rabbits tend to be tend to be social and live and live in big colonies, whereas bil bilbies uh, tend to make their own individual burrows. Uh, bilbies, un unlike rabbits, are, are omnivorous. So, in addition to uh, e eating plant products, usually seeds in this case, uh, bilbies also eat in insects and spiders and similar small creatures. So their habitat, bilbies live in desert and grassland primarily. They're in Australia of course. The, the big red regions are, are obvious on the map but if you look if you look closely at the map you see, you see uh, some li some little dots here if you a few in the southeast, a couple in the west, including one in what, including a few in some of the islands off the coast. So the, those smaller areas of habitat are are actually places where where bilbies were reintroduced uh, by you know, by human preservation efforts because uh, once upon a time they were found all throughout Australia, but since but since then, they've been they've been uh, driven back uh, by, you know, largely largely by a ha by a habitat loss. Uh, also, also, also uh, the co co uh, competition from uh, invasive invasive rabbits is has been a pro a problem for them because the uh, rabbits and bilbies uh, eat the, eat the same plant foods. And although bilbies uh, have the advantage that they, they also eat insects, uh, that's not uh, that's not, en not enough uh, to uh, to uh, prevent them from being uh, outbred and outcompeted by the rabbits. So bil bilbies are considered vulnerable in the in the uh, in endangered species uh, listings. Uh, they so. Uh, so a vulnerable is the is the uh, the uh, least bad le le level of endangeredness because because uh, they, they, you can see on the map they still have a, a fairly wide distribution but the po but the population is shri is shrinking and and and, of, and uh, the efforts to reintroduce them uh, outside of the uh, of their uh, cur their current habitat haven't have you know haven't been hugely successful yet. They've they have established the colonies as marked, but those colonies haven't spread. And so that's that's the bilby, and why so why bring it up in, at Easter? Well, we have the Easter bilby. Rabbits, as I mentioned, are harmful invasive species in Australia, whereas the similar-looking bilbies are, na are the native animals that belong there. And so, the idea of uh, having an Easter bilby rather than Easter bunny, uh, it was first mentioned back in the 1960s. It became a really popular trend in the in the 90s and 2000s in in Australia. It, yeah, as a way of promoting environmental awareness and. It, and it's particularly the awareness of the problems caused by by invasive species like rabbits, and so the th and so the thought was that that people should shouldn't be feeling uh, 
you know, all warm and fuzzy about 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 rabbits, which might be cute, but they're but they're a real a real menace to the local ecosystem and don't belong there. Need to need to be gotten rid of. So instead of instead of uh, ha having a holiday celebrating an Easter bunny, we'll have a we will celebrate the Easter bilby instead. The animal, the the rabbit-like animal that belongs there. But, However, it, it, the, the Easter Philby trend is dying out, and the, you know, unfortunately, the, 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 the fault there is squarely on the corp, corporate world. So the candy industry is basically con controlled by multinational corporations, and the, during the height of the, of the Easter Philby trend, uh, these 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 companies that uh, did produ produce produce choc chocolate bilbies for the Australian market, as you, as you see in the photo there, of an Easter bilby, but they, but in the last few years they they've uh, get, given up the practice because because it, because because of course it co it costs more to pr to produce an extra product just for one country, and the and the demand although. Easter bilbies sold well. The, the 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 candy companies reckon that if they if they weren't producing Easter bilbies, uh, they, a lot a lot of the consumers would would be just as happy buying plain old Easter bunnies, which appears to have proven direct correct. So the Easter the Easter bilby was a was a was a nice idea and and. And, and introducing a bilby instead of bunny made a made a nice you know, April Fool's ish Easter, Easter prank for you guys, but it had, but it's something an idea that's not that's not likely to last through the long run. So, well, there's what you need, there's what you need to know about about bilbies and the Easter bilby in particular. <laughs> Here are my here are my sources. Wikipedia, of course, the big the big so the big source on on the east the Easter Bilby thing and uh, and for that and for that matter a good source as far as the actual animals. The the, the IUCN li listing was also helpful. Your Im the the images are the, are you. Your, your usual what ones you find on, on Wikipedia with a appropriate for reuse licensing, and well, that that's that's all for now. And you know, have, enjoy your holidays, everyone. Which whichever holiday you're celebrating, be it pa Passover, Easter, or just April Fool's Day. Or, if, or if, even if you're not interested in any of those, I'm sure you, I'm sure you'll be happy to celebrate having off from school next week. So enjoy your enjoy your break, and uh, after these final two days of class, I'll see you again the week after next.